Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we're asking you to bless us here. Give us wisdom as we study the Bible. I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. There are many questions we can ask about the sanctuary. One of them is the sanctuary real? There are many Christians who believe there is no such thing as a heavenly sanctuary. So you've been taking this class for a while. If I asked you, what is the evidence that there's a real heavenly sanctuary, what would you say? What is the evidence that, in the Bible that there's a heavenly sanctuary? Do any of you know any evidence? So, the first evidence is in Exodus 25. Exodus 25. It's the place where we first read about the sanctuary. Look at verse 8 and 9. Exodus 25, verse 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all the pattern that I show you. So you're making a sanctuary after the pattern of the tabernacle. <coughs> That's what it says in English in verse 9. According to all that I show you after the pattern of the tabernacle. <coughs> in the same chapter, look down near the end at verse 40. <coughs> What's it say? So Moses is up on the mountain and he was shown a pattern for this. Now this pattern is mentioned in Hebrews. <coughs> Look at Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8, and we're going to look at verse 5. We need verse 4 to have a whole sentence. ভবিষ্যৎ so do you see there in verse 5 that the pattern Moses saw was of heavenly things? So that's one of the evidences. 
I mean, Exodus and Hebrews together, that, that Moses saw a pattern from a heavenly sanctuary. So, AJ, Jatapusat Kibal say, Tadosho. Now, another Shukisher Hive, and Kunokisur Moto Adosho Hive, then to a Kisher Moto, a Kisher Moto, a Utotamra, Ibrio de Pai, the Shargan Moto. Shargan, if you just want to tell me. And now look at Hebrews 8, verse 1 and 2. Ekun, Ibrio art, and do you got the key? Would you run? Could you read verse 1 and 2? Amnaja Bolchi, Tar Ashal Kota Holo, AJ. আমাদের এমন একজন মহাপুরোহিত আছেন যিনি স্বর্গের মহান ঈশ্বরের সিংহাসনের ডান দিকে বসেছেন তিনি মহাপবিত্র স্থানে অর্থাৎ আসল উপাসনা তাম্বুতে ঈশ্বরের সেবা করেছেন সেই উপাসনা তাম্বু মানুষের খাতাই নেই তাই তা প্রভুই খাতিয়েছেন সো ইজ देयर সেনচুরি ইন হেভেন ধর্মধাম এই ধর্মধাম কি স্বর্গে আছে the verse is pretty clear, isn't it? And who built the sanctuary in heaven? It's in verse 2. Who built it? Who built it? Lord. The Lord built it. Yes. So yes, there's a sanctuary in heaven, and God is the one who built it. <coughs> and the sanctuary on earth was made after the pattern of the one in heaven. <coughs> so Hebrews says more about the one in heaven. <coughs> Look at chapter 6. Yeah, Hebrews 6, verse 19 and 20. Can we could you read that for us? 19 and 20? Yeah, Hebrews 6. Amadir, Amadir, she protasha, so who entered within the veil? Yeah, that's Jesus. So this must be the heavenly sanctuary. <coughs> and when Jesus went to heaven, he went into that sanctuary. It's very clear here. Now, some people get confused in this verse. Because when you draw the sanctuary, you have two compartments. And you have a veil to get into the first one and a veil to get into the second one. <coughs> and this one says Jesus has gone within the veil. <coughs> but they read it as if he had gone into the second place already. How do I know that's not the right way to understand it? It's by what we find in chapter 9. Look there for a minute. 9 verse uh, 9. We'll start in verse 1. <coughs> or verse 2. And Neil, can you read for us verse mm. 2 and 3 and 4? Oh, do you do that? Isure Seba O Upashanar Jona Proton, Devastatite, Kotogulo Nium de Ahoe Chilo, Evo, A Jogote Upashanar Jono, Bishes Ekta Jaiga Kothao, Tate Chilo, R. Se Unusare Ekta Tambutri Korahe Chilo, Se Tambur Proton on Shetato, Batida, Tabil O Shomogruti. <laughs> so what is this curtain called in Hebrews 9.2? Tahole, Ibrio, Nayothai, Duipade, Oi Pardan Namki. 
It's called the second veil. So if this one's called the second veil, then which one did Jesus enter in chapter 6? he went into the first one initially. In the, in the Old Testament, these two curtains each had names. This one was called the door. And this one was called the covering. So it says Jesus entered the sanctuary. Just the phrase tells you which one he went into. Because if you enter the sanctuary, you must be going in at the at the door. Uh, yeah, I... if Jesus went in the first one, mm-hmm. then who went in, went in the second one? Uh, Jesus had not, no one had gone in by the time the Bible was written, but the Bible looks forward to a time when Jesus would go from the first place to the second place. That happened in 1844. So, Jesus was Jesus in the sanctuary on earth, the priest went into this first one every day, all year long. But he only went into the second one one time a year. And that was to symbolize that Jesus would go into the holy place at the beginning and only much later into the most holy place. So we're asking the question, how do we know there's a heavenly sanctuary? It doesn't seem like a hard question. I mean, we saw plain evidence in Hebrews 8. And there's much more evidence in the Bible. Look at Isaiah chapter 6. This is one of the most famous chapters in Isaiah. Mm -hmm. This is the chapter where Isaiah sees God's throne and he says, Here am I, send me. Look at verse 1. So the prophet saw the Lord. He, he saw the Lord on his throne. 
And where was the throne? <coughs> you see the end of verse 1 where the throne is? Is that what it says in Bangla's worship room? Yeah. Yeah, so right here you see that God's throne is in the temple. Yes. Uh, look back at Psalm 11. <coughs> we'll come back to Isaiah 6 in a minute. Psalm 11, and Kemi, would you read for us verse 4? Does the Lord have a throne? Yeah, and where is it? It's in heaven. And where is the Lord? He's in his, what's he say? Yeah, in the holy temple. So that question, does the sanctuary exist, is not a hard one in the Bible. <coughs> when you get to Revelation, you see it all over the place. You even see Jesus dressed like a priest. And you see the golden candlestick. And you see the altar of incense. You see the 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 Ark of the Covenant. All of those are in Revelation. So it's kind of silly to ask the question: Is there a sanctuary in heaven? <laughs> But many theologians say there is not one. They say this, and they have more than a PhD or two PhDs in theology. <coughs> How could they say the Bible so much and say there is no sanctuary? This is why I don't trust theologians. That's why I come straight to the Bible. Because I found the theologians to be so often so ignorant of the Bible. Now go back to Isaiah 6. Isaiah chapter 6. And we're going to look at verse 6. Isaiah 6, 6. Tokon egon, shorap ekta, shorap hate, jolonto koila niye, amar kache, uriaste. Koilata tini bedi report teke, chimta ye niye chile. So here you see the altar of incense in Revelation. I'm sorry, in Isaiah. We're in Isaiah now. <clears throat> you see the same altar in Revelation 8. <clears throat> so if you're still asking, how do theologians think that there's no sanctuary? <clears throat> it's partly based on one verse. <clears throat> Look at Revelation 21, 22. What verse? Revelation 21, verse 22. It's talking about the New Jerusalem after it comes down here to earth. 
After the thousand years, the wicked have been destroyed. The whole universe is full of holy, righteous beings. It says in verse 22, And I saw no temple there, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. <laughs> so, maybe there will be no temple on earth. When the New Jerusalem comes back here, maybe inside the city there will be no temple. Because the Lord is going to be there. And that makes the city into a temple. But that's more than a thousand years from now. It doesn't say anything about what's happening right now. And right now the Bible is full of information that there is a sanctuary in heaven. So that sanctuary teaches us about salvation. But I think even in eternity there will be a sanctuary. Because of something else you find in Revelation. Uh, look at Revelation chapter 3. <coughs> Revelation 3 and verse 12. J. Joy Hobe, Takami Amari Shore Goreta, Tang Koru. Say a copono by the other. Is that the whole verse 12? He knows that. But it sounds too short. Hmm? It's very short. 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 It's very so after the plan of redemption is over, the temple is going to be made up of God's people. It will be a spiritual temple. And the Bible talks about that too. Peter says that we are all living stones built together into a living temple. <coughs> when we teach people the truth about the sanctuary, sometimes they get confused about certain parts. We say that we're living now in the time of judgment. That Jesus is now judging his people and cleansing the heavenly sanctuary. <clears throat> and people say, How can you cleanse something in heaven? Heaven is a clean place. And so it doesn't need to be cleaned. But uh, look back at Hebrews 9. <coughs> Hebrews 9 and verse 23. Would you read that for us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on earth you had the the earthly sanctuary. 
And it was cleansed with the blood of animals. But verse 23 says the heavenly one is cleansed with better sacrifices. <coughs> So there is a cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary. There isn't. There is. It's cleansed by the blood of Jesus. But what does that represent? There's no real dirtiness in heaven. But in heaven, you have a record of the sins of God's people. <coughs> and it's those sins that are blotted out. So that that's represented by the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary, the cleansing of the earthly sanctuary. <coughs> So if I ask a question on the exam, and I say, why does the heavenly sanctuary need to be cleansed? What would you say to me? Because uh, it is cleansed by the blood of Jesus and our blood is not there. And that's a good answer, Kemi. And why would you need to clean something in heaven? Why does heaven need clean? It's because of the record of sin. The sins need to be blotted out. <coughs> so after the finishing of the judgment, there'll be no more record of the sins of God's people. After judgment? Yeah. I'm going to tell you a little bit of history. Then I'll ask you some questions. There are a few names that you probably ought to know. <coughs> Not many. Penradi, Ballinger, Ford. These are three different men. So, who are these four men? They're all quite important to Adventist history. And especially to the history as relates to the sanctuary. These men have had a lot of influence on what happens even here in Bangladesh. But let's talk about them one at a time. How did the church learn about the sanctuary in heaven? That was an article by Crozier. Crozier had two friends that studied with him. <laughs> but he was the writer. And he wrote an article uh, that explained the sanctuary service and the judgment. <coughs> this was the beginning of the sanctuary message. Later, uh, the two friends that helped him remained faithful Seventh-day Adventists. But Crozier left the faith. 
And when he died, he no longer believed in a heavenly sanctuary. So since he wrote the article, <coughs> that made people doubt the whole teaching. But I read the article. It's excellent. And if you have the Ellen White app on your phone, you can find this article. And uh, it's that article is full of good Bible information. So when Crozier left the faith, <laughs> he didn't go from a bad Bible position to a better Bible position. He left the truth behind him. And if someone says, he gave you the message. Why don't you believe what he said about it? I would respond. There were three people studying. When you have three people studying the Bible, it isn't always so that the one that is most biblically close to God is the one that is the best writer. It isn't always so that the one that is the most studious is the same one that is the best writer. Both of his friends st stayed in the church. <coughs> and so we can assume that they were the ones that were the, the students. Now let me come to Conradi and Ballinger. They have some things in common. <coughs> they lived about the same time. They both knew Ellen White. Conradi became the leader of the Adventist Church in Europe. Conradi became the leader of the church in Europe, the Adventist Church in Europe. Conradi, who is to say, Europe, Mohadeshe, Adventist Church, Neta Hose. And Ballinger was one of the leaders in California. And Ballinger, who is to say, California, when America is a Shahore, church leader. When they studied their Bibles, they both were teaching the sanctuary message for many years. But later in life, so Conradi was in Europe yeah. and Ballinger was in California. Conradi yeah. Europe and Ballinger to say California. Both of them in later life turned against the sanctuary message. They used arguments that we've already answered in this class period. <coughs> yeah, they, they used arguments to fight against the sanctuary that have already been answered during this class period. <coughs> but Ballinger used another argument. He went to the verse in Acts where Stephen is being stoned. He worked there. No, no, he, he go, takes you to that part of the Bible. Ballinger takes you in the Bible to the story in Acts where Stephen is being stoned. Ballinger, 
And there, when Stephen is about to die, he sees Jesus in heaven. He sees Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. Ballinger said, God's throne is in the most holy place. So if Jesus is there, then he must have gone there in AD 31. What's wrong with Ballinger's logic? It's a simple bit of truth that you find in the book of Daniel. Daniel talks about the throne of God. Daniel. <coughs> this is Daniel 7, verses 8 and 9. Daniel 7, Yes, so let me finish this sentence. So God has a throne in heaven. And in Daniel 7, it says his throne has burning wheels or wheels of fire. And uh, it even, that same chapter even shows Jesus being brought on his throne to where the Father is. So does God's throne have wheels or not? It does. Then is it stuck in one place or does it move? It moves. So when Jesus is in the holy place, the throne is in the holy place. And when he goes to the most holy place, the throne is in the most holy place. So Ballinger's argument was faulty. Yes. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Speak loud. First is Ballinger and Conrad. They have a they have one thing that was if if they have if uh, if there is a sanctuary in heaven, that that's the first first debate they had. No, Conradi and Ballinger believe in a sanctuary in heaven, but they turned against the Adventist message, saying that Jesus went in the most holy place when he went to heaven. That's their one argument. You said there was two arguments. I mean, they had many arguments about that. Okay. Not not two conclusions, but a variety of arguments to bolster the conclusion. Okay, and we've so, already answered them. Okay, so like about entering where, and mm -hmm. this is the argument yes. you're talking about. Yeah. Because so, I'm right talking about the issue of the issue of the issue So, because Conradi and Ballinger were leaders, the people under them came to have some of the same mistakes that they had. <coughs> so if you travel around the world today, you'll find Adventists believe in the heavenly sanctuary in Africa. That is in Africa believe. Adventists there the Adventists in South America believe. South America, America, the South Christian Adventists The Adventists in most United States believe. But if you go to California or to Europe. <laughs> You'll find many Adventists that don't believe the sanctuary message. And God is now raising up young people in those places to teach the truth about these things. So, 
I've given lectures on these things in Germany. That's when I was a young man. <laughs> so now let's talk about Ford. Ford just died about five years ago. Ford just before Corona. Uh, Ford was the most famous Adventist theologian of his time. Ford, tar shomoyer, the famous Adventist theologian, mane dharmo tatto bid chilo. He's from Australia. Australia, Australia theke. And he got his PhD in Europe. Ar tar PhD Europe theke ash. Uh, when he was studying, he eventually lost confidence in the Adventist teaching of the sanctuary. <coughs> He's the one that began saying that there is no sanctuary in heaven. He said that it's not real. And because of that, very many pastors in Australia left the Adventist Church. So now you come to this age. And how does this affect people in Bangladesh? In many of our seminaries around the world, there are teachers who were the students of Dr. Ford. He <coughs> No, but he taught in the seminaries in Australia and California and Europe. Oh, that's what do you mean by like being? The, the universities where we train our pastors okay. for graduate degrees. Acha. So, age JJ University the Amra Dharmata Amadir Man Adventist there the university as a Taina. So Ekane J Dharmata to near J Pora, Jamun Basket theology near Pora, the Bartaraki Hobby, Pastor Hobby. So, we Europe. Our Australia, the JJ Erocom University, as a Jacane, a pastor, when a pastor, a parashana corona, Shekane, a Ford Kintu Porase, our Oikane on a Adventist Ford Chatro. So here in Bangladesh, Bangladesh, you've had theologians that went outside of the country to study. And sometimes they brought back to Bangladesh these falsehoods that they learned while they were abroad. So this is why it's important that we learn to defend our beliefs from the Bible itself. When we defend it, and we want to teach the congregations to look for truth in the Bible itself. As long as they trust someone that has an advanced degree, it's easy for Satan to trick them. Do you have any questions about these things? Welcome back, Ellie. Did you climb the mountain? Was there a deer there? They just make noise because it's fun. They just get tired of being lonely. Something happened. You're taking... I told her I thought a deer was in a snare up there. And... Yeah, I heard that. No, no need. Okay. So, when we talk about the sanctuary, <laughs> we have the simple truths you've been learning all semester. <laughs> That's what you want to teach to those that are under you in the church. <laughs> But 
But when you talk to those who might be over you, they need that truth also. But some of them have been infected. And if you know the answers to their objections, you can even help this class. So we've gone over three objections today. You should know the answer to all three. Um, let me just remember them just a moment. One of them is the idea that there is no sanctuary. Because of Revelation 21 22. So, what's the answer to that? That's in the future. But in the current time, the Bible is full of uh, evidence in a heavenly sanctuary. <coughs> so we find the find the uh, answer in the future. You're saying that? No, I'm saying Revelation 21:22 is talking about the future. In the future, there'll be no sanctuary in heaven. Oh, we uh, <coughs> no, shot both again. Or at least in the future, he saw John saw no sanctuary. <coughs> Another, another objection is that Jesus has entered within the veil. According to Hebrews 6. But our answer we find in Hebrews 9. We find that there are two veils. And Jesus went into the first one, the door. And the third one is that Jesus is at the Father's right hand. So they say that means he must be in the most holy place already. I mean, even long ago there. But what's the answer? It's Daniel 7. God's throne has wheels. It moves. <coughs> Do you understand those three objections and the answers? <laughs> If you have a question, now is a good time to ask it. That's the door. Yeah, so where is Jesus? He's at the right hand of the Father. Where is that? Ballinger says that's the most holy place. Ballinger says that's the most holy place. And since Jesus was there when Stephen was stoned, he must have went into the most holy place at the beginning. Yes. If the right hand of Jesus is the most holy place, and, and Stephen saw him there, then where was Jesus? In the most holy place. Long ago. That's the argument. What's wrong with it? It's that the throne has wheels. The Father can be in the holy place or the most holy place. <laughs> where Jesus is, that's where the Father is. Does that make sense to you? So, there is no limitation on like, how can Jesus enter? Jesus can enter before or after, whenever he wants. When he wants, but according to prophecy, he didn't go in until 1844. He didn't go into the most holy place until 1844. Jesus. And, but Stephen saw him. Stephen was. 
Let, let me say this again, and you can translate what I'm saying. So Jesus was here for 1,800 years. 1,800. 1,800. 1,800. When Jesus was here, where was God's throne? <coughs> It was here. So when Stephen saw Jesus, he saw that he was by the throne. He didn't see where the throne was. Just that Jesus was there. But, but where was the throne? We know that by studying other parts of the Bible. That Jesus was in the holy place. And when we see Jesus in the most holy place, we see his throne has wheels. In fact, you can see it moving in Ezekiel. Ezekiel sees the throne moving around. <coughs> All right, so I hope that you get it. I need to pray for you, and we'll be done. Our Father in heaven, bless us as we study the sanctuary. Make us helpful to other people. I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.